Okay, I think I think I should start. Um, I can't see any participants today since we are broadcasting differently. Uh, my name is uh, Pierre Chamor. Uh, I'm a professor within the law school at Durham, and I'm also the director of admissions uh, in the law school. Um, so welcome. Uh, I will present today um, on our LLM programs. Um, there will be opportunities, sorry, to ask questions uh, at the end. Um, so let me try to start by uh, by sharing my screen. Um, which, try again. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you are able to to see my screen if anyone could could give me a heads up. Yes, we can see your screen. Great. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, okay. So let me start um, by telling you a few things about uh, Durham Law School first. Um, just as an aside, the picture here on the on the slide um, is part of the law school. So this is the building that we have uh, in Durham, uh, the Palatine Center, which we also share with um, administrative services and with um, with um, with. With the vice chancellor actually who sits on the other side of the building um so let me say a few things about down law school um we know that applicants um assess us um, they look at uh, rankings uh, international rankings national rankings we of course in durham we also look at our rankings we're interested in in seeing how we compare with other schools uh, nationally and internationally so i put a few rankings onto the slide for you here uh, the Complete University Guide, the Times, the Guardian, uh, you will see that uh, we are consistently within the top 10 universities uh, within the UK. And uh, in addition, uh, in the QS World University rankings, we are top 50 law school, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Um, if you come to Durham, you will meet uh, academics working in very different fields. Uh, we have a very large uh, faculty now we are about 80 plus uh, members of staff we have expertise in a very range a very great range of of different subjects many um or i would say the vast majority of of my colleagues are research intensive that means that they are researching the field that they are working in uh, we have um, international expertise we consult nationally internationally and uh, these members of staff will obviously also avail will also be available to you if you if you join us. If you ask me um, to say something uh, about the law school itself, I would say that uh, first of all, um, the law school is part of a university that has a very long tradition in the UK. But if I look at the law school itself, I would say that it is a very modern school. Uh, it's modern not only in the building. Uh, in which we are housed, but it's also more than in the in the topics, in the subjects that we are teaching. We are very uh, very open school, a very inclusive school. Uh, our students come from all over the world. Um, my uh, my colleagues come from all over the world. We have um, members of staff that uh, come from uh, the Americas. They come from Europe. They come from Asia. Um, they come from from Australia. So we are very. Um, very open, very inclusive school. Um, we are in Durham uh, city center, which is uh, a very uh, beautiful city center. It's built, it's built around a, a beautiful castle and a beautiful cathedral, uh, which have a long history. Um, the city itself is not too big. It's not too small. Um, it's ideally um, a city that you can can walk across so you don't have to take the bus usually uh, if you want to come to the law school. Uh, it's a very safe uh, student city, um, which I think is also very important uh, to highlight. So let me tell you something about um, the different um, areas of expertise that we're having. I already mentioned to you that we have a very wide range of expertise uh, we teach a very wide uh, range of, of topics that is also reflected in the uh, different research centers that, that we have. So currently we have about nine research centers. They're all housed within the law school and they bring together members of staff that have common in uh, research interests. I listed these centers onto the slide for you. 
If you look at the slide, you will see that uh, it's a very diverse range of uh, of uh, of uh, of centers. So you have centers on human rights, on gender, on European law, on Chinese law, on Indian law, on criminal law. Um, some of these research centers are also open to our students. So, for instance, I uh, I co-direct uh, the European uh, Law Institute in Durham, so daily the Durham European Law Institute. Each year, we invite students to join our centers. These students can then uh, organize events uh, that we will um, put under the banner of uh, the Durham European Law Institute. Um, it's very good for us, of course, because you know we get to interact with students, but it's also very good for our students because um, it shows that they are active. It's something that they can put on their CV afterwards, and which shows that they are uh, actively participating in the law school. Now, um, as for the pictures, on top of um, the slide, you will see another picture of the law school. So this is the, um, the part of the building that will give you access to, uh, to, uh, to the law school. And then on the bottom of the page, uh, you have a few of our uh, LLM students years ago uh, with two members of staff, um, John Linarelli, which has left us. Uh, but also with Mike Adcock, which uh, which which is still in the in in Durham Law School and which is also very active. In terms of numbers, let me just mention that uh, we have about uh, three hundred and fifty students at the undergraduate level and about two hundred postgraduate students. So this varies each year, but uh, it will give you an idea of uh, of the number of students that that you will uh, that you will meet when you're in in Durham. So let's look at the LLM. Uh, the LLM is our main postgraduate um, PGT program. So it's a top program, uh, although it has a research uh, component. This research component uh, takes the form of um, a dissertation that our students write as part of their studies, and I'll come back to that uh, later. Um, so it's a top postgraduate degree in law. Uh, it's a one-year full-time program um, except for our medical law LLM, uh, which is also available to students as a part-time program. But all the others are full-time study programs. Um, you will be taught by way of lectures. So lectures are, um, or lectures can be of, of different sizes depending on, uh, on the module that you are taking. Um, in addition, you, also, you will also be taught by way of seminars. So seminars as opposed to lectures uh, are uh, taught in smaller groups. They are more interactive um, group um, groups. So you will have uh, the chance to, or we, especially us, members of staff, we have uh, an opportunity to, to interact with, with students. Uh, so it's more, it's more intensive, I would say, than, uh, than being taught by way of lectures. As far as the assessment is concerned, um, well, all our programs are, of course, assessed. Um, as far as the LLM is concerned, um, mostly um, the way of assessment is by way of essays. So our students write essays. Uh, you might also be assessed by way of exams, but at the LLM level, uh, it's mostly uh, essay-based. Now, I mentioned to you that uh, part of your uh, LLM uh, consisted uh, in writing a dissertation. So you will have the possibility to choose between um, different uh, length of dissertations. Uh, there are different choices here. So you can have a smaller dissertation, you can have a, a, a bigger dissertation. Um, you will be able to choose the dissertation topic uh, that you want to, to write about. Um, you will get a supervisor who will then supervise you uh, during the course of your, uh, of your dissertation. And the idea is really for our students to, to write on something that they are interested in. Uh, so we will give as much uh, choice as possible to our students in order for them to essentially choose the topic that they want to, to write about. Now, let me tell you something about the LLM programs that we have. Um, there are currently nine streams that you can choose from. There is the international trade and commercial law, uh, which uh, tends to be among our most uh, popular LLMs. There is the corporate law LLM, which uh, is a 
an LLM that we uh, introduced a few years ago, which has also proven to be very popular. There's the International Law and Governance LLM, there's the IP LLM, the International Environmental Law LLM, and then as already mentioned, uh, the Medical Law and Ethics LLM. That LLM is slightly different to all others, to all of the other LLMs because it's more interdisciplinary. Um, that means that you will take uh, a number of modules within the law school, but you will also take uh, several other modules within uh, different other departments of the of the university. That reflects its, uh, its interdisciplinary uh, nature because you're taking uh, modules in other uh, departments of the, of, of the university, you will also be assessed in these other departments. Um, that might be then by way of assess or by way of exams, depending on what is available in these other departments. We also got the European Trade and Commercial Law LLM, the in, in, and the most recent one that we just introduced um, this year, I think, is the International Dispute Resolution LLM. And then, of course, uh, if you if you are not interested in in taking a specialized LLM, you can also just decide to to join our uh, general LLM. So that is an LLM that um, that doesn't have any kind of uh, speciality. You essentially choose the courses that you that you want to take among those that you are interested in, uh, without uh, without having to go for any kind of specialized modules. Now, um, this slide gives you an overview of, um, of the different modules that are available. Uh, some of these modules are going to be core modules. So core modules are modules that uh, our students need to take. Uh, the most common core module that all our LLM uh, students take um, independent of the, the LLM program that they are choosing, um, that is the Applied Research Methods uh, module. Um, this is a module that I have taught uh, to our LLM students this year. I've also taught it in the past. Essentially, this is a module that prepares our students um, for uh, writing the dissertation. So we think it's important before our students engage in, in research to, to help them um, to get um, to understand the basics of what it means to research uh, a, legal, a legal topic. So we introduce them to, uh, to methodology. Uh, we also introduce them to some basic things that are important, for instance, footnoting, finding sources, and so on. So the Applied Research Methods course is a course that, our, that all of our students take. And then depending on the LLM um, that you will choose from, you might also have to take um, other modules that are core modules uh, that will then depend, as I said, on, on, on the LLM program that you are choosing. So uh, besides the core modules, you will also have to, cho to choose among optional modules. Um, this slide gives you an overview of um, options that are also available. Let me mention to you that uh, not all of the options that are available each year uh, are going to be on this slide. And some of the options that are on this slide might not necessarily be available uh, each year just because our research, sorry, because our members of staff are research intensive. That means that uh, they will go uh, on sabbatical. And if they're on sabbatical, they might not be available to teach. That being said, uh, we do offer each year a very good range of, uh, of, of LLM models to our students. Now, let me say something about entry requirements. Um, first of all, let me start by, by saying that um, the law school does not uh, decide who joins uh, our, our LLM programs. Admissions is something that is done outside of the the law school. So even though I am the uh, director of um, law school admissions, in actual fact, uh, the law school does not decide on, on applications. Uh, the, the university has a specialized team uh, within the university uh, who will look at, at the applications that we receive and that will then decide uh, which um, applicant uh, gets a place or not. Uh, they might consult me uh, from time to time on um, 
on, on the requirements that we uh, set as a law school, but generally speaking, individual applications do not come to the law school. Um, so that means that I can only offer you uh, some general um, some general advice on, on LLM entry requirements. First of all, let me mention that um, we require our applicants to graduate uh, with a, so in order to join our LLM programs, they need to have a 2-1 uh, degree or an equivalent um, degree um, in, in the qualifications that they have received abroad. Um, this degree will generally be a law degree or it will be a degree in which law is a major component. So there's some flexibility here, but we do require our applicants to, um, to come to Durham with, uh, with, with an undergraduate degree with an undergraduate degree that is where law is, is a major component. Now, having said that, uh, when it comes to the LLM in medical law and ethics, uh, there is more flexibility uh, in terms of the entry requirements. So we still require our applicants to, to have uh, a good to one degree uh, or an equivalent uh, in, an, uh, in, a, in the qualifications that they have taken abroad. However, when it comes to uh, the subject areas of this degree, we are flexible. So that might be a law degree uh, or uh, a degree in which law is a major component as for the other uh, LLM uh, programs. However, we also accept students uh, who graduated in anthropology, in medicine, other professions such as nursery or pharmacy and so on onto this program. And the reason why we are more flexible in relation to the LLM in medical law and ethics is because it is an interdisciplinary program. So it's not just a law program. You will not graduate with a purely law degree. It's going to be an inter interdisciplinary degree that you will get at the end of, uh, of this program. Now, uh, we also have language requirements. I've put this uh, language uh, requirements point on all of, all of, all of my uh, presentations that I make. It might not be relevant uh, to you, but let me just mention that we would generally require uh, for applicants who take the ILTS test uh, 7.2 average, which would uh, be a 7.2 in writing and uh, nothing less than 6.5 uh, in the other components. And then again, this is a slide that I always include in my presentations on the LLM programs. It might not be relevant to you, but let me just mention that we, or the university also mentions preset, the university also offers, sorry, the university also offers uh, English language uh, precessional programs that applies to, uh, to people who do not just have met our language requirements and that are then offered the opportunity to, uh, to follow a precessional program here in Durham. Okay, that's as far as my presentation is concerned. I put my email onto the slide here. Um, in case you have any questions, you are, of course, uh, welcome to send me an, an email and I will try to respond to your questions by email. Um, I will also try to respond to your questions now. Uh, but as I said, if they are specifically about um, the application program, I might not be able to, uh, to offer you an answer. In that case, I invite you to send me an email and I will forward your email to our admissions team who uh, will respond uh, to your queries. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation and uh, feel free to ask me any questions that you have. Thank you so much for giving this insightful presentation. Now time for Q&A session. I will call out a question from the YouTube chat box. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, are there any specific prerequisites or recommended qualification for applicants to the various low programs? Okay, so as I said, we are pretty flexible in terms of uh, what we require. So there are no um, special prerequisites in terms of what we need you to study, uh, except that we expect you to have a law degree or a, a degree in which law is a major component. Um, but again, as far as the modules that you have taken in your law degree or your other degree, uh, we are pretty, uh, pretty flexible. And then again, let me mention to you that if you're interested in the LLM, uh, the medical or LLM, there's greater flexibility in terms of the degree that, uh, that we would expect you to have. Uh, could you please share the details on the eligibility criteria for scholarship offered by the law school? 
Okay, so um, there are a number of um, scholarships that uh, the law school offers. Um, I can point you to the to the web page um, if that helps you. Um, I'm not sure to what extent. Um, obviously, each of these have uh, different uh, different prerequisites. Let me just check if I can find it, and I can pop it into the message chat. Okay, so I found the, the web page. Uh, now, generally speaking, I am not involved in the. Um, can I just put this into the chat? Does that work? Yes, you can share on the chat box. I will share it on the YouTube chat box. Okay. Did that work? Uh, yes, I will just share it on the YouTube chat box for the students. So generally speaking, I'm not invo in, involved in the um, scholarship part of things. Um, I would suggest that you look at um, you look at, at the web page in the first instance. If there are any questions that you have, uh, feel free to send me an email. And if I can't uh, help you, I'll make sure to forward your email to a person that can. How does Durham Law School rank compared to other law school in the UK? Okay, um, so on on my presentation, I I showed you uh, a number of rankings that um, that are currently available. So that would be the guide in the Times and uh, the Complete University Guide. You will see that we are uh, in the top ten, well in the top ten uh, each year. We have always been, I've been working in Durham since two thousand and thirteen, so over over ten years now, and we have consistently been within the top ten universities. So, um, so we are pretty good. We we wobble a bit. We go down a few places. We go up a few places, but we are consistently within the top ten. Uh, is it easy to find other? Is it e easy to find a job after finishing a course in international environmental law? Okay, well, you know that that is also that is always a question that is difficult to answer because at the end of the day. Um, we will offer you uh, an LLM degree that um, you know will give that will put you in the right position to apply for jobs, say in environmental law. But what you need to do as soon as you join uh, Durham Law School is to uh, work on preparing um, for for the employability market. So that means that you you know you should try as much as possible to attend events uh, that we organize. Law firms come to Durham. Um, other employers are coming to Durham. Try to organize, to to participate in these events. Work on your networks. Yeah. Uh, try to build a network uh, of people uh, that can help you. And then uh, a lot of um, a lot will depend on 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 how well you are in terms of um, well applying for jobs, presenting your job. So we will give you, in a sense, we will give you the, the basics. But um, whether you uh, you know you will be uh, sex successful or not will depend to a large extent um, on yourself. It will depend on how well you graduate, so how how strongly you graduate. And it, as I said, it will depend on on what other actions you take in order to improve your your employability skills. Can you describe the admission process for Dharam Law School? Sorry. Uh, can you describe the admission process for Dharam Law School? Okay, so as I said, um, the, the law school does not um, decide individual applications. So we will not, uh, so if you apply to Durham, we will not get your application. Your application will go to university admissions. Um, university admissions is a specialized team um, that sits within the university, so outside of the law school. They have different teams. Um, scrutinizing applications um, in different uh, for different departments. What I can tell you is um, through my interactions, I know that they are uh, that they are first of all very competent in what they are doing and then uh, they're also relatively quick uh, in, in processing applications. Um, if you have any questions during the application process, you can communicate with them, and it might be that they will communicate with you in case they have any kind of uh, questions regarding your applications as well.
what unique opportunities does dharam law school offer for students interested in pursuing a career in law what can you just repeat the beginning yeah what unique opportunities does dharam law school offer for students interested in pursuing a career in law well first of all we offer you a um you know a very strong degree um so it's a it's a degree that is recognized both nationally and internationally so if you are interested in a career in in the uk for instance um our uh, our students um are uh, working uh, for all the major law firms uh, in the city of london uh, we send people um, to the bar of course that is a very competitive choice so uh, it really is matter for um for for the strongest of our students at postgraduate level of course we also have uh, students uh, who will return to their home countries who will be uh, working within law schools uh, sorry within um, law firms uh, in their in their native countries um so i would say first of all that uh, what you get in durham is a very uh, is very strong degree uh, which is recognized nationally and internationally we offer you the opportunity to meet um people um you offer you the, the, the opportunity to network um but as i said at the end of the day what you do with these opportunities is really up to you so uh, it, a lot of um, of your career of your future will depend on the choices that you make for yourself as well uh, we give you the basics uh, and then it is up to the students essentially to to make the most of it okay so i have covered all the questions from the youtube chat box thank you for answering all the questions so well do you want to share any final words well what i would say is um i'm i'm sorry that i cannot actually see you um we organize events in drama as well where students come and see us it's always um a pleasure to meet uh, applicants uh, unfortunately in this uh, situation it's not possible um i hope that i gave you a taste of what durham uh, is like uh, as i said if you have any questions feel free to uh, to email me and um, i'll get back to you otherwise um enjoy your time um apply to durham if you feel that it's the right choice for you and uh, i might see you next year um so until then uh, all the best from my side thank you so much everyone for your valuable time all the audience if you have any, have any further questions please feel free to contact the siuk india office for more update do follow us on our social media handle bye bye take care thank you thank you all thank you so much